At night, tropical forests are full of mysterious sights and sounds. Whether it's a display of fireflies, or the astonishing call of a putu, or the curious gaze of a screech owl. But one of the strangest nocturnal animals is the oil bird. This meter-long bird feeds on the fruit of small wild avocados from species like this one, the endangered Ocatea monteverdensis. This bizarre bird uses echolocation to find its way in case its superb nocturnal vision is impaired. The echolocation clicks you hear are quite audible in comparison to echolocation calls that bats make. Here you can see the oil birds coming in to pick a ripe fruit. They don't get enough moisture from the avocado fruits, so they come in to drink on the wing. They always make several trips flying over the pond, probably to gauge the exact distance before they take a drink. Or maybe it's to be sure there are no predators around. Finally, the oil bird gets a drink and flies off to go foraging. This bird got closer to the water by every passing. Bats were having a drink too. The eye of the oil bird is small, but the pupils are large, which allows the highest light gathering capacity of any bird. Its retina has the highest density of rod cells of any vertebrate eye. The echolocation clicking is probably used when natural light is low. And these scream-like noises are probably for communication with others. And here comes a kinkajou. It's not sure what his interests are. This species of loraceous tree, that is the wild avocados, produces a good crop of fruit only every three years. It's not only important for oil birds, but also for quetzals, bellbirds, and guans. Local residents in Monteverde, Costa Rica, have set up a program to educate the local people of its importance and also to plant more trees. Avocados are full of protein and oil. The range of oil birds is from Guyana, the island of Trinidad, to Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and a little of Brazil. They can live up to 3,400 meters, but oil birds have specific requirements of caves to nest in, and forests containing fruiting trees they like, such as this wild avocado, but also certain palm trees. They contain so much oil, they were harvested to keep the lamps on for the early colonists. Oil birds have morphological adaptations to allow flight at very low speeds, which helps them grab the best fruit. It was in 1986 that the first oil bird was officially registered in Costa Rica, a dead one, but in the last years have been showing up in Costa Rica every year to feed, but they haven't stayed around all year, and it's assumed they are coming from very far away. An ongoing project is using telemetry to see where these birds are coming from. I'm leading a project uh, uh, with some fellows in, in Monteverde and also with uh, help from the Max Planck Institute from Germany and the Monteverde Institute. Our hope is to track the, uh, 
these birds here in Costa Rica from their foraging areas to their nesting caves somewhere in South, uh, in South America. Unfortunately, the transmitter placed on this bird didn't last very many days. There is hope that next year, an oil bird with a transmitter will fly to its cave in South America.